video, we'll be covering torts as part of our MEE Highly Tested Issues Guide. The first thing I want to put on your radar is that you should be aware of how torts is tested. Torts is tested about once a year. It's frequently tested on its own, but it has been combined with agency. Torts in general is fairly predictable, and if you're familiar with the highly tested topics, you should do well on a torts MEE question. So turning to those highly tested issues, the first one we will discuss is negligence. Negligence is by far the most highly tested topic on torts essays. So to start, let's remember that there are four basic elements to every negligence claim. Duty, breach, causation, both actual and proximate cause, and harm. Remember that actual causation is the idea that the breach must cause the harm whereas proximate causation requires that the harm be foreseeable. A plaintiff needs both to be successful on a negligence claim. Many examinees generally feel comfortable with the basic elements, but they're not confident in the more nuanced issues of duty and causation. And these are things that the examiners expect you to know. So if you struggle with these concepts, be sure to rewatch your bar lectures on them or engage a tutor to get some help. Also, it's worth spending time on these concepts because the MBE will test causation and causation shows up on crim law questions too. So it's really time well spent. Within the world of negligence, I want to bring to your attention some highly tested issues. The first is children and the duty of care. A child owes the duty of care of a hypothetical child of similar age, intelligence, and experience acting under similar circumstances. However, an exception to this general rule is when you see a child engaged in an adult activity. When this happens, a child is held to the same duty of care as an adult. Some examples of adult activities are shooting a gun, driving a boat, or driving a car. An example of how they tested this on the MEE is that a child was operating a snowmobile. This is an adult activity, and therefore that child was held to an adult standard of care. The next issue that I want to discuss is the eggshell skull rule. The law states that a defendant is liable for the plaintiff's uncommon and unforeseeable harm or reactions due to the defendant's negligence. In other words, the defendant takes the plaintiff as he finds him. So if a plaintiff has a disorder that makes their bones break easily, the defendant will be liable for that harm, even if the defendant was not aware of plaintiff's disorder. Next, turning to premises liability. Remember that the premise possessor's standard of care depends on the plaintiff's legal status at the time of entry. You should memorize the different statuses and their associated standards of care. Before we turn to each, if you see premises liability come up on the MEE and it's unclear what plaintiff's status is, be sure to talk about all of the different ones that could be applicable to plaintiff and their associated standards of care. In the past, they have written questions where it was purposefully unclear about how that plaintiff should be classified, and they expected examinees to explore those different possibilities and liabilities of each. So as a quick recap of those different statuses and standards of care, undiscovered trespassers are those that the defendant does not know exist. They are not owed any duty of care. However, the landowner cannot act willfully or maliciously toward them. Discovered trespassers are those plaintiffs that the premise possessor knows or should know of. Thus, the premise possessor must warn or make safe any unreasonably dangerous, concealed, artificial conditions that they know of. Licensees are social guests, like your friends or family. The premise possessor owes the duty to warn or make safe all concealed dangers that they know of, but there is no duty to inspect. Lastly, invitees. These are people invited on the land to confer an economic benefit or land that is open to the public. Here the premise possessor must warn or make safe all dangers that they know or should know of. There is a duty to inspect. The next highly tested issue is negligence per se. This is all about statutory duties of care. If your fact pattern gives you a statute that establishes a duty of care, that's your clue that they're testing negligence per se. In order for a plaintiff to be successful on this claim, they must show that the defendant violated a statute without excuse. The plaintiff was within the class of people that the statute was trying to protect, and plaintiff received the injury that the statute was attempting to prevent or protect against. Plaintiff must still prove causation and harm. 
Turning to our next highly tested issue, vicarious liability. And this is something that usually comes up when tort and agency are tested together. Employers or principals will be vicariously liable for the torts of their employees or agents if the torts are committed within the scope of their employment. So for example, if you own a pizza place and you hire someone to deliver pizzas for you and they get into a car accident while they're out delivering pizzas, you as the employer are vicariously liable for that tort. Why? Because your employee committed that tort while doing their job or in the scope of their employment. The last highly tested topic that I'm going to briefly touch upon is strict liability, specifically strict products liability. For a strict products liability claim, the plaintiff must show that the defendant is a merchant, the product had a defect, and that the plaintiff used the product in a foreseeable way at the time of injury. Try your best to memorize those elements. The next tip we have for you regarding torts is to spend a lot of time on negligence. I've already mentioned this once, but it is the most highly tested issue on torts MEEs. Additionally, it's highly tested on the MBE. It makes up 12 to 13 of your scored 25 torts questions. So dedicating a lot of time to negligence is smart because it's going to make up a large part of your bar exam. Our last tip is to practice. Practicing past MEEs is critical if you want to master torts on the MEE. So that wraps up torts for our MEE highly tested issues guide.